Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time of coming here, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you get notified. And if you're always coming here to watch my videos, thank you so much. Welcome to another movie review. Guys, in this review, we're going to talk about the movie Jabu Jabu the Warrior, released August 2023. Ritagiri, a So, for the opening scene, we see King Kaija getting raided by Jigon. Jigon was played by Odunladi Adikola until Ogundiji walks into the scene and saves that king. And in my mind, I'm already thinking that, oh wow, this person is a good man, saving, is a hero. I think we are playing. Meanwhile, I need to give props to the special effects guy because, I mean, that place where he caught the hand of Jiga and the hand, I mean, the wrist was on the floor and it was just shaking. <laughs> you could do try, you could do try in that place. Now, Okundiji is a very powerful war expert. I mean, he has raided a lot of villages and towns and his fear is spread home and abroad. Now, he has a war school that people come to learn war, the art of war from him, okay? Now, one of those persons who had come to learn is Botija, played by Latif Adidi Meji. Oh, Logan. Emilo, what's the name Logan? Oh, Logan. Now, one of the major, um, one of the leaders in Ogundiji's um, school is Bogumi, played by Ibrahim Yakini, who has a wife. Morumubo, played by Bimbo Adimoye. So, Bogumi, over time, get to really, really love um, Botija and get to, I mean, they become really close becoming like a godfather and a godson. In fact, even more than that, like a father and a son kind of relationship. Another scene that really got to be in this movie was where Botija, Botija stood up against um, the food. I mean, they were told that in the school, the food wasn't enough, so they have to share. And Botija was like, no, that cannot happen. And because of that, he was beaten um, by the command of um, Ogundiji's daughter, Kitan, played by Bokumi Oluwashila. Last, last, they shall fall in love, you know? I, I think I was really expecting that. I just knew that they just has to be in love. They just have to put that one. So I really expected that. So and one I'm reason why the fame of Ogundiji has been spread home and abroad was because anytime um, they are fighting a war and it seems that they seem to be losing, he sends in Agemo, especially when he's not fighting the battle, maybe he sends his men on an errand to fight a war and perhaps they are losing. Agamo is the demon, is a max demon that he sends that will fight and all the um all the opponents. Now as Botija goes to war with Ogundiji, Botija steadily grows to become someone really popular, really loved by his counterparts. I mean everybody liked him. Ogundiji becomes jealous of Botija. Ogundiji just wants to be the only person who is popular, who is feared, who is respected. Everything, it just has to be him. And he saw Botija as a threat. So he sought out ways to keep Botija in check. He made Botija to go through three tasks. One of them is fighting with Bogumi to death. Now, the reason why he was coming after Bogumi was because he had sent Bogumi, or when did he have sent Bogumi on an errand, and Bogumi had not delivered. You know what's up? Oh. The third task 
that Obundi did give to Botija was that he was going to fight a village with only three warriors with him and he was issued everyone. And Botija did that. I think in a way, for me, I think he was trying to please and do the tax to see that he gets, he gets promoted in the war school because to him, Obundiji was like a war hero, a war figure that he was looking up to. I mean, his village had been raided, he had all his family killed, so he wanted to be able to defend himself. And what better way to defend yourself with a war expert, right? And on his way back, because um, Obundiji had seen that there's no killing this guy, he sent Agemo to destroy um, Botija on his way back. Someone who was coming back from war, already tired, exhausted. And after a lot of fighting here and there, Botija defeats Agemo, which has never happened before. <laughs> He opens the max and discovers that it is none other than Kiton. Kiton is Agemo. There are so many things I kind of saw coming. But you see, Kiton being Agemo. Mm -mm. I didn't see it coming. I did not see it coming at all. I do was shocked. I was so shocked. So it turns out that Keton is not even the biological daughter of Obundiji. She was one of the war um, slaves that Obundiji had collected from one of the wars that he had gone to fight in a, in a village. He got to that village and he saw the he saw Keton. Seeing that she had, he used this ritual eyes and saw that this girl has a special mark in her body and decided to use her, right? So he started using her for his devilish and wicked um, plans, making her to kill people against her will because he had locked her spirit. So she has no choice. Whatever he wants her to do, she will do. Obundiji realizes that Agemo is dead. He's mad about it. But it brings the word to him in the war school. Erufunto sees her daughter. I mean, her daughter is now. She gets enraged that Kitan, of course, she knew Kitan wasn't her daughter, but Kitan was the only child that she had because she had no child of her own. Now, it turns out from what we see in the movie, Erufunto sacrificed her womb for Ogundiji to become as powerful as the warlord that he is, to become very, very powerful. So is that is the reason why she cannot have a child of her own. However, Ogundiji, in his own wicked mind, wants to continue his lineage. So he impregnates Kitan, and Kitan gives birth to a son for him, and she gives it. He gives the son to one of the wicked kings that he's always protecting and fighting for. Um, to raise as a son. Now, this was the moment that Erun Funto realizes that not only has this man played on her intelligence, but he has used the daughter, the person that she was raising as a daughter, to console herself that, okay, even if I do not even have a child of my own, I still have a daughter that I can raise and call my own. And now this child is Not only is the child the this man had her pregnant, gave birth to a son for him, and he deceived me, keeping the child somewhere else and having him raised. Hell hath no fury for a woman scorned. The war school is divided because there are some persons who are siding Botija and there are some who are siding Obundiji, right? The war starts, they fight each other. Botija and Obundiji, I mean, get to face each other. But because Obundiji, I mean, a war is by Babangla, inside a war. And as they were fighting, Erufunto, takes the sword, the magic sword, with a lot of spells and incantations, and she stabs Ogundiji, and of course, to I mean, I will say that anger, first of all, anger and jealousy actually blinded, and eventually, Ogundiji, because it was blinded by, by jealousy and anger that Agemo was dead, someone that he was using. Ogundiji can use anybody. The fact that he could play Bogome and Botija against themselves tells you that there is nobody that Ogundiji cannot use as long as it is to 
help himself become even more powerful, become more feared, he will do that. So that is the movie. Now, the final scene just gives us, I think like the final scene just tells us like there might be a part two. We do not know. Femi Adebayo has not told us, but it seemed like there's going to be a part two. <laughs> So that, in a brief explanation, is the movie Jagun Jagun the Warrior. Now, the cast did exceptionally well. I'm really, really going to praise Femi Adebayo, who played the role of uh, Ogundiji. You see that? <laughs> that is her that was, that was doing like this. I mean, that, like, the way he was able to do that throughout the movie, I mean, throughout all the scenes that we saw him, I mean, he was something that I'm having to do your head like this it will take a lot of practice i love how um i've seen him grow i would say i've seen him grow because i've seen the movies that he has done at least the movies that i've seen him do right i've seen the movie that he has done over time and i see how much he has progressed he's the producer of this movie by the way but i see how much he is putting into his work and he's actually getting it done he's making like he just made everything different now, the movie was set in a pre-colonial um, pre Nigeria scene kind of thing. I loved every aspect of the movie. I love the fact that they added, they added a lot of um, um, Yoruba um, incantations, Yoruba, um, uh, what's it called now, wise sayings, proverbs. They added a lot of that. They infused a lot of that into the movie. I love that. I love the cinematography. I love the special effects. I love the costumes. The cast and the crew members were exceptionally good. Everyone brought in their A game. And I love the fact that, I mean, when this movie opened, I mean, everyone was in it all over the world. UK, Canada, US, everywhere. It was, it was just being talked about. If you were on Twitter, you would see that, I mean, when the movie was first released, Everyone was talking about it. There was a lot of hype about the movie, but the movie lived up. As far as I'm concerned, you might think otherwise if you've seen the movie. But for me, I feel like the movie lived up to its height, or to the, up to the height, and even surpassed it. The narrator, Jimmy Solanke, if I did not pronounce it, please forgive me, sir. Um, he was the narrator. I loved how he was speaking those Yoruba. Of course, I, I am not so fluent in Yoruba, but I loved how he was talking about Ogundiji, singing the praise of Ogundiji. Ogundiji. And even the beginning of the movie where it was just like a ginnika, ginnika, I wish I could be able to say that. But anyway, I loved, loved, loved everything about the movie. I loved how they were showing um, the scenes of the movie, how it was shot and all that. One very important thing that I might add is um, not infusing English while they were speaking Yoruba. If one thing, whenever I have to see a Yoruba movie, I want to see a Yoruba movie where they are speaking complete in, in speaking complete Yoruba, not adding Yoruba and English. And I really, really, really hope that um, Yoruba actors and actresses and the directors, when they do their movies, I really hope that they are able to infuse this. Speak only Yoruba if it's a Yoruba movie. It's an, if it's an English movie, speak English. I saw that a lot of dedication was put into it. And to the directors, Tokwe Adebayo and Adebayo Tijani, they did absolutely well. I know a lot of time, a lot of a lot of resources went into that movie, but at the end of the day, it was absolutely worth it. Have you seen the movie Jagun Jagun? I mean, it's, it's months now, but the movie is still doing very well out there, not only in Nigeria, but outside the country. And this tells you that Nollywood is really, really solidifying herself in um, the movie industry. Let me know if you've seen the movie. Um, tell me what you enjoyed when you saw the movie. And if you're yet to, it is currently on Netflix. Make sure you go there and check it out. 
Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're yet to. Turn on the notification bell so when I drop another video, you will get notified. Until the next time, do well and stay safe. Bye.